you heard it on repeat. So <laughs> thank you for being patient with us. Welcome again. <laughs> Uh, we've got the Q and A turned on, so hopefully, if you have any questions, you can get in on that. You've probably heard this intro a few times, but we're welcoming everybody. Uh, thanks for joining. So, let's jump into it a little bit. Uh, now is mid July. You've planned a bunch. You've got more to plan, and we hope you have some hunts coming up. New videos are on though. So, but at least we're sharing a nice screen. Right. So we'll jump in here. Let's stop this share. So make sure you can see all of us. You know that we are real people. So I'm Austin Atkinson. I was raised in Arizona, but now I live here in Utah. I'm married, have six little children, most of which are too young to hunt, but they're getting dangerously close in a few states and are enrolled in hunter education. So I've worked at Hunt and Full for seven and a half years now. I love most of my job here. But my favorite part is helping hunters go on hunts and talking to members, hearing about your experiences and everything you've got going on. And we're excited to showcase a few of our tips and tricks with you tonight. We wanted to start with Hunt Full members, so here we are. Yeah, my name is Jared Lyle. I'm the CEO here at Hunt and Full. I've been here for six years, but I've been a Hunt and Full member for over 20. Um, something I've been a big believer in for, like I said, literally as long as I was, basically when I first got the urge to start applying out of state, I stumbled on Hunt and Fool and realized what a valuable resource it was. And uh, I have two boys, they're all, they're both grown up. I'm gonna be a grandpa this October to my beautiful daughter-in-law. Um, turned 50 this year, drew, a, drew my first sheep tag ever. So a lot of big milestones this year for me. But uh, like Austin, you know, when my wife and I first got married, we, we worked at a youth ranch for troubled teens. Well, Austin didn't do that too. But like Austin, I enjoy the element of helping uh, our hunters go on hunts, make memories, make experiences with their families, uh, friends, etc. cetera. Um, my wife and I have always had that kind of desire to help out. That's, we literally worked for seven years at a youth ranch, a nonprofit youth ranch. And, I, and at Hunt and Fool, I get to combine that passion for hunting with that passion for helping people out and it's been an amazing journey here so um that's kind of what motivates me my favorite thing in the world to do is archery elk hunt i am jessica taylor byers i'm the marketing and pr manager here at hunt and pool um, i was born and raised in the south uh, in central texas and i've hunted most of my life so i'm a little bit different with uh than these guys and most of my employees and the fact that i did not grow up in the west started western hunting in 2015, um, only knew a little bit about Colorado, Colorado and New Mexico. Uh, ended up at a trade show, shook this guy's hand, and here I am. It's it was one of the best relationships I ever built. Um, Hunt Bowl is a wonderful place to work. I learn a ton every single day. I think that's probably my favorite thing about working here is the wealth of knowledge that's uh, in this building. I'm constantly learning, and it's opened up a lot of opportunities to hunt things that I never would have imagined um that i could being from the south so yeah. awesome one thing that's super important to us tonight um we kind of ran this out to hunt and fool members first um we're going to talk to you about a new uh, web application that helps you manage all this stuff called hunt planner but it wouldn't be possible if it weren't for hunt and fool and the reason we came out to you guys first is because we trust the experience that you guys have. We have to, we need people to pop in, try to use this app, abuse this app, et cetera. We're doing a, a full free year to anybody who attends this webinar. Um, if you decide you like it and love it and want to be a part of it going forward, great. But we don't want this to come across as a sales pitch. If anything, we want to kind of share ideas, share our frustration with the process. Um, and hopefully provide a tool, like I said, that, that uh, will be very valuable to managing and organizing the application systems, which are not getting any easier. They're not, they're not. Yeah, I'm gonna share a screen here. We'll kick this off. For, for those of you who are already familiar with this, you already know the story, but Hunt and Fool was founded in 1996. So we've got 25 plus years of helping our members go on more hunts with better information. I mean, that's been the mission statement all along. During that process, 
Garth Carter, the founder of it, realized that more and more of the Huntful members were struggling with managing their own applications. They were too busy, they missed deadlines, et cetera. And so he started a licensed application service. And we still do that to this day. We process tens of thousands of applications a year in 21 different states. And over the last four or five years, we built out a really robust software for managing those applications so that we'd never miss a deadline on behalf of those clients. And we can also access the data in meaningful ways, store it in meaningful ways. Um, a lot of that had to do in large part because the state systems just kept getting, again, more and more um, convoluted, I guess. But after we built this robust software system, we realized that literally every hunter who's managing anything that has to do with hunting data could use these tools. And so we've spent the last year rebuilding, repurposing this for a kind of a DIY point of view to manage your own applications. I know we all get stuck. Like for me, I got stuck doing all the applications for my family. You know, you're, when I joined Hunt and Fool, uh, back in 2009, someone had told me, hey, you need to be a part of this and, and jump in the game. Now, I was already applying in a couple states, but I wasn't aware of all the opportunities out there. And so, of course, I joined, got the magazine and started applying. Well, as soon as you start doing applications and keeping up with deadlines, undoubtedly someone in your family or someone in your friend circle is going to want you to do their applications. Now, you're probably not going to be able to charge those guys because they're your friends and they want to go hunting with you. But Somehow along the line, you become the de facto application guy in your group. And as we found, how are we going to keep all that data? That's why we're here. And that's why we've come up with all this. Hunt and Fool is a great resource to find out where to apply, how to apply. You read all the information in our state sections, but we were missing the next step. And that's what we're talking about today. So through the build out of this uh, new tool that we're going to present to you guys, um, we kept in we kept in mind all the things that you're trying to manage as far as sensitive data. So we're talking usernames, passwords, email addresses, social securities, credit cards. And when you think about trying to manage that for yourself as an individual, that can be overwhelming. Um, even if you're only applying in one or two states for yourself, that's overwhelming. But imagine if you're like Austin and you add all these family members and friends, or even Jared, he's managing it for his sons and his wife. And um, it's a lot. And in an effort to prevent you know, yourself from having to call them on deadline day and get their information, we wanted to provide a place to store that and a safe place to store that. So when you guys and gals signed up for this webinar, we asked you, how do you currently organize your data? And <laughs> I think we're all a little shocked at the amount of people um, probably pushing like 50% of the attendees say that they still use a notepad. Um, for obvious reasons, that's not the safest place to store your, your data or anybody else's data. Um, next to that was Excel spreadsheets. Um, there were some Google Drives. Maybe you have uh, an email folder where you store everything or screenshots in your phone. Whatever that method is, you're, it's it's not wrong. It's obviously working for you, but we believe that we have a much better solution than all of these listed. Yeah, and uh, security is a big part of this, right? So I always used uh, a Google Drive or a Google Sheet uh, for a lot of mine, but that gets messy. And then you forget which email and which Google account. And we do not need another Google or email account in our life. Right. Yeah, no. Undoubtedly, you've, Please no. you've probably submitted applications with a work email. Well, is that still your work email? Can you get into that? And it starts getting messy. And now these states don't allow you to just log in with your sensitive data or say your social and your birth date. They require usernames and passwords, which is another level of security because it could be the same password you're using across multiple websites. So we want this to be private. We want it to be based around your login. But we also wanted it to be easy to access. So you could jump on this on your phone. When you're traveling, you could log into this new tool and see it from wherever you are. If you're like me, oftentimes you hear about draw results, maybe when you're using the restroom and you're scrolling Instagram <laughs> and you're like, draw results, I, I gotta get the login and check to see if my mom drew or whoever. And you know, I don't know where that information is. Well, now hopefully it'll be in one spot, not written on your whiteboard, not written on your notepad, uh, it's going to be consolidated in one safe place that's backed up and always accessible. Yeah. It is the appropriate time to show them your 
box on the floor. I don't know if I can get out of here. I put a, <laughs> I wedged myself in. So yeah, this is this is my method. Let's see. We that was to, my method. We had to. We have to bring this up here. Twenty, almost twenty-five years of applications. <laughs> What's well, inside there? Rocks? Or... No, nope, my folder for every state. My kids' vital statistic data. My wife's super secure too, as you can see. Nice plastic case that nobody could ever hack into. <laughs> Very nice, Dave. So it, that's how a lot of things we did with paper receipts. I mean, we're about out of the paper application, Dave, but I'm pretty sure there's no one out there still trying to submit a paper application, even though there's a few states that still accept them. But we like printing receipts. We like having uh, proof because sometimes the states do screw it up and yeah. you have to be able to go back and prove that you did apply, that you did pay, We've that, that you did by point guard, that, et cetera. So we want you to be able to access that. and. If you want to still print out a paper copy, you can, and we'll make it even easier for you. Yeah, one other thing that Austin touched on when it was talking about draw odds, um, we wanted to create something that not only managed your data and kept it secure and easily accessible, but also quick links to go out and find all of those places. Because I can go search Utah's website long enough, and I will figure out where the draw odds are, because they keep, or I mean, sorry, the draw results, um, but I'd much rather visit my Hunt Planner app and click on that in, a, in one click. Yeah, that's right. Let's share our screen back here. Yeah. You want to tell us about this one? Right. So we're just going to give you guys a little teaser, a little overview, and then we're going to dive into how does this work? How do I get started and, and just hold your hand through it. Um, we, we feel like it's user friendly, but we wanna have the opportunity for you to ask questions and um, it'd be a very interactive open format. And again, I do wanna stress, cause I see new participants logging in here and there. Um, we want, we're inviting you into like this inner circle is what we're really trying to do here. We'd love to have you visit it, check it out, see if, it, see if you can break it, help us make it better. That's yeah. why we're reaching out to this audience first. Yeah, definitely give us feedback. That's what we, we want. Okay. No audio. Well. Yep. Why is it still playing? Yep. Okay, so you might have noticed that there's a 30 day free trial in there. Ignore that. We are going to give you a free year to, to test out, like Jared said, um, try and break it, give us some feedback, take it apart. Um, as we'll see at the bottom of the slide, July 22 will give you a free entire year um, to use this tool. Um, but I'm going to break down some other tools. I mean, the, the that's year. awesome. Yeah, I mean, this. Everything we've talked about, the history and why we did this, is kind of bringing us to what we're calling Hunt Planner, simplifying your hunt. So there is now a tool to track all of this. You can build unlimited profiles. So one person or one login can handle all your friends and family. No matter where you are, you get instant access to everything. You can make notes, you can upload documents, and we're gonna do a walkthrough right now and show you that. So never miss a deadline. We'll put this link in the chat as well uh, for the code to use for a free year. So let me share a different screen here and we're going to walk you through it. Check it out. Okay, so when you come to the huntplanner.com, uh, we've made it pretty easy for Hunt and Fool members. If you see down here, if you haven't created a Hunt Planner account already, you can click have a Hunt and Fool account, click here. You click that and it's going to allow you to log in with your current huntandfool.com um, website login. Or if you have Onyx Elite, uh, you can use that single sign on button and log in with your Onyx account. And keep in mind, whether you are a, a member, an annual member of ours or not, this is like if you have an email address at huntandfool.com that is where you would use this login. That's just right. want to make that very clear. So when you log in here, 
obviously as a new user, you're not gonna have uh, quite as many people added, but I built this sample account to show you what it looks like as you're viewing all of your hunters. And so on your sidebar menu here, you can add everybody. This is family, friends, children, spouses, anybody you have access to. Now keep in mind, this is not a, a shared account. So if it, you can't create an account and then have your buddy create an account and try to join or mesh those, everything is based off of your login. Um, it, we did that to make sure you're in charge of this data and it's secured only to your account. Nothing is being shared with us at Huntful. Nothing is being shared with your friends or anybody else. Uh, this is just for you to keep track of. So it's based off of your login. Uh, when you add and create a hunter, I'll jump into this one here. And, and keep in mind, y'all are seeing this built out because we wanted to create a demo for you to see. Mm -hmm. Initially, when you sign in, it's going to have a big blue button that says add hunter. And that's when you would add yourself. Start with yourself. It's the easiest way. And then add whoever you want after that. So you want me to go back to this guy who looks mysteriously like me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll start there. So when you click on a hunter, obviously you can enter all of their sensitive data. Um, it's as simple as clicking the edit button. You know, if you need to make any changes, you can keep addresses. You can keep the credit card you use on file when you apply them in various states. You know, if it's your buddy's card and he's giving you his MasterCard to use in a state, great. If not, these are not required fields, so you don't have to fill them out. You can use this tool to the depth um, of use as you'd like. You can also keep under education, social, phone number, email, residency, all of that based on the hunter information. And we actually use a secured server that actually has clearance to store social security numbers, credit card data, et cetera. So Jessica is not going to take your credit card and go on an Amazon spree. <laughs> um, it's all under appropriate, like federally regulated secure server uh, and private data storage. So it's safe. We have a whole hunter education section here, driver's license. So you can keep track of all of that. I don't know how many times in the past on the deadline day, you have to text your friend because he won't text you back. I need your driver's license number. I need to know what your hunter ed is. Well, stop chasing that down last minute. It's gonna drive you nuts. And you can store multiple credit cards too. I think that's important because if you have one that's not going through or- Or if you want a buddy's card or your kid's card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you can store multiple. That's right. When you come over here to your states, this is where it starts getting deep and you can start adding all the states that you're going to store information on. Even if it's a state that maybe doesn't have points, you still want to keep track of, you know, what's my sportsman ID? What am I applying there? So you can select all the states you'd like. And then it allows you to get to the next page where you can input the species you're applying for there. So you can put in your department ID. You can mark the species, even like Alaska here, where there are no bonus points or preference points, you can still mark, you know, I apply for black bear, brown bear, caribou, whatever it may be. When you come down to states that do have points, we've matched the state system. So Arizona, for example, you can store your customer ID, your portal username and password, and your point totals. Now, these are not automatically updated from the state. At no point do, does this hunt planner tool connect to a state. There's a few reasons there, some of which are obvious, some may not be. Uh, anytime you're connecting to a state, well, frankly, we don't trust the states a lot of times. They don't update when they say they're going to update. They're delayed. They Or they change something uh, and it's a disaster. Yes, you can't get in. So <laughs> this will be timestamped based on when you update your points, right? So you update the points, 100 points, loyalty points, it kicks you out of total, it matches that state. As you go through and add all of these states and species, you'll, you'll see it, it's intuitive to how that state works. Preference points in Colorado, weighted points for mountain goat, sheep, and moose. Uh, it's going to match what you see on the state site. And no matter where you're applying, we're going to match how they ask for it. In Kansas, it's your Department of Wildlife, number that's what we asked for so as you add all those states these are editable anytime but when you first build someone out it's going to take a little time it does to yeah. put in all of their information but you really only have to do it once to get started you can store their logins and their passwords for each respective state and because it is hard to say keep them all the same some states make you yeah. change them 
Some states don't. Some states need a special character, some don't. So you can make them all different. And again, this is for all 50 states. So at Hunt and Full, we cover, I think we're up to 22 states now. Mm -hmm. um, but when we created this, we wanted to account for people like me from the South. I still have uh, information from Texas, or I want to store documents and even some of my trophy photos. Like you can store all those things across all 50 states. So um, it's, it's powerful. It's not just for Western big game hunting. As you change your states in your drop down, you're going to see everything else changes in the notes and documents field. So when you select Arizona, you have a quick snapshot here. What is the login info? And if you're you know, showing it to your friends and you don't want to see, you know, password just displayed all over, we've got a hidden button. So it'll naturally show up hidden there. You can see your CID and you can see your point totals as you jump from state to state. And that's where that timestamp will show up. That that's the best way that we've figured out how to, since you can't, or since we can't connect responsibly to the state websites, it's not even legal to do so that it automatically updates your points. The best thing we could do is put a note whenever you update a point right there uh, where Austin's cursor is, it shows you exactly when that point total was last updated. So yep. you'll know, oh, I got to go back. It's been a year. I need to update my points. Now, one of my favorite tools here is when you start jumping over to notes and documents. I'll switch my state here. When you switch over, you're able to keep any notes you want. And this could be anything from, when should I start applying them in this state? Because they're too young. Or I've already decided they're going to do elk in 2026 because the dates are good. You could store any note you want there. Or I spoke with this outfitter about this upcoming hunt and this is how I feel about it. It can, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit on notes. You can store those. They're categorized by year. Documents, I got to jump to documents because it's one of my favorite. Uh, when you go down to documents, you can upload as a PDF literally anything you want. So uh, what I do is when I apply in that state, I will upload my actual uh, PDF receipt, right? As it appeared from the state, as they sent it to my email, I want to see that and I want to see my draw order number, you know, whatever it may be from that state. That is the best way we've found to make sure you can keep track of that. And you don't have to print it out because it's as simple as clicking the download or the view button. You can go in and you can actually title those documents. If you want to retitle it, categorize it by year. I've started going back to some old receipts I care about or hunter education cards that maybe I took in that state or old hunting licenses. You can do that across all states. Okay. I, I've even downloaded copies of my driver's license, my passport, mm -hmm. my kids' passports, driver's licenses, my wife's. Because again, it's all secure storage. And it's the only place I've found that I can go find all of that without texting my wife in a frenzy and telling her that she's going to miss out on <laughs> another hunt application that I forgot to get her in for early enough. <laughs> I've, I've also started storing my flight data. So I'm constantly traveling. I'm leaving for Alaska next week. It's not, it, I guess it's hunting related, but it's not a hunt. Um, but I start my flight data in that. And then we have a general documents uh, category. So if you don't want to do it by state, maybe you want to throw your passport in there. Um, I keep my driver's license in there, even though there's obviously a state associated with that. But just general documents that you want to have on hand, it's really, really convenient. It is. Let's jump over to some of the other tools you can do. When you come back to your dashboard, obviously you can upload a photo for everyone, so it makes them easy to find, but you can upload literally as many as you'd like, as many as you are responsible to keep track of. Um, it makes it easy. Maybe you've got a friend that you only apply with in Colorado, so you can put him in there and just put his Colorado CID and his points and leave it at that. Then you don't have to call him every year. Hey, how many points do you have? If you're the guy in charge of Colorado deer applications, you can just do it. No problem. Yeah, I think our current subs subscription goes up to 50 uh, hunter profiles. Mm -hmm. If you need more than that, reach out to us. Uh, we just figured that would cover the majority of people, but it'll be broken out I by- I hope I never have to- Do you have 50 <laughs> friends? That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right now you choose between uh, two users, four users, eight users, and then it jumps to 50. Some other neat tools we want to show over on the left here. We've got a state directory. Tell me about this, Jeff. 
Um, this is just a basically a quickly link area where you know sometimes there's different websites or different landing pages for to apply versus look up your points and then there's hunter education and we wanted to break all of that out we wanted to provide a phone number and an email if there is one it's easy to contact these state departments and get the answers that you need if you can't find them right here in this in this tool um we're, we're building out deadlines that you know for the western states that we cover um the remaining the remainder of the 50 states don't have more information than the quick links right now we do plan to build those out um but the quick links and in, in that that's a great tool to have just by itself yeah you can go apply for the draw draw results hunter ed take you right there dump you right on the login page uh, so you don't have to sort through their sites where a lot of these states use private party vendors or third party vendors you want to make sure you're on the right site otherwise you get frustrated let's jump down the draw deadlines we run all the draw deadlines here even more than maybe you're interested in but it's all right here in the tool if you're asking what's coming up next this is going to sort by what's next next week is utah elk permits come available and we the pennsylvania elk and it's going to keep going through if you think application season's over if you need some more hunts <laughs> scroll through this list definitely some more coming up colorado leftovers idaho second draw south dakota bonus point only arizona spring you know points only periods are kind of important and if you miss yeah. those it can really screw you up in the future and then the ones that are passed are going to be at the very very bottom if you want to reference those you can um, but they'll drop to the bottom once that deadline passes. That's right. Plenty of deadlines that yes. we keep up with so that you don't have to. <laughs> Come back up to the top here. Your virtual hunting office. You want to talk about cost calculator? Yeah, so one of the, I, I, I know for a fact that we're the only, uh, the only brand out there that offers this draw cost calculator because it's incredibly difficult to keep track of to stay on top of to update but this is the only place that i know of that you can log in or well you can basically that quick link will take you over here and you can drop in you can go window shopping for hunt dream hunts i guess is how i would say it that's right very little sign up information and then you start plugging in states and it auto calculates the total amount of budget that's going to be out of pocket in other words non-refundable you're not going to get that back as opposed to upfront fees that that are going to be refunded to you in the event that you're unsuccessful in the draw, etc. And it'll run you a complete total and kick out uh, a PDF that shows all of those costs broken out by state. Um, and it's live as you're working through it. It updates uh, real time as you add and subtract different hunts. Like if you click into multiple species in Wyoming and you realize that Wyoming could hit you for north of $13,000 on your credit card uh, because they charge it all up front, you might want to back out of that one. Yep. So that is the basics of Hunt Planner. In a it, nutshell. It might seem very simple and say, well, is that really going to change my life? Well, we've been playing with it for quite a while, and I can promise you it will save you an enormous amount of time. We built this because we had the frustrations ourselves. You saw Jared's uh, toolbox of <laughs> file cabinets. I've got spreadsheets that I've forgotten about that, you know, had an important data on them. Honestly, yeah. some of these states require some serious data when you're getting into driver's license and social and everything. Like, it's yeah, actually, I thought I had it bad applying in two states when I live in Texas. <laughs> uh, then I started working here and I'm trying to manage, uh, I don't know, probably a dozen. Yeah. So it's it's a really neat tool and we're going to continue to improve it and hopefully with some of your feedback, we'll get some other ideas, but we do have big plans for it and we'd love to hear um, how it's working for you or not working for you. I mean, we want all the feedback, so please share with us. For sure. We're going to take a few uh, questions from you guys. Obviously, we need more feedback. We want your feedback, as Jared said in the beginning. Yeah. So if you're just joining us and you want to sign up for Hunt Planner, obviously it's free for the first year. Use code July 22 and that'll get you in. You can create your account using your Hunt Full login and try it out. Just please give us feedback. Uh, we really want everyone to know 
how it can simplify your application strategy. Obviously, we have big plans for future additions that we're going to put on this tool, yep. but we really need to hear what would be most beneficial to you. A uh, couple questions that have come in so far. Uh, Peter asks about the cloud service where a lot of this is being stored. This is all based off of local Amazon Web Services in the States here. Uh, so they're what we use AWS uh, for our services. Um, we're not tech gurus ourselves, but we have a pretty good partner that we use for all of our tech storage and development, uh, both to manage Hunt and Fool proper, our magazine, all our membership, we've been using them for years and um, that's where your data is stored safely on Amazon. Uh, Scott asks, is there an easy way to view OTC tags for multiple states? Scott, I hope you're a Hunt and Fool member. You can definitely jump in uh, to the e-magazine, view our July and upcoming August magazines. We cover tons of opportunity over the counter hunts uh, in all the Western states. We also and, just did a podcast on it. Is that what you're going to yep, say? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I don't, I don't remember. I think it's, it's one, called Tag Snag. It's, it's called Tag Snag. I want to say it's one fifth episode one fifty eight, one fifty eight, one fifty nine, something like that. Um, go check that out. I listened to it uh, just on my drive last weekend. I went to go camping, and it's a really good one. It's one of my. I actually told him it's one of my favorite ones. That's extremely valuable. We got a question from Michael. He asked about um, adding email alerts and push notifications when a draw app is open. That's a great question. Um, our intention is to create those notifications based on the states which you have elected to receive notifications on. Currently, uh, we run our Huntful app where we push free notifications to anybody who'd like to get them. Um, we have separate categories you can enroll for there based on if it's draw results or draw deadlines but we don't allow you to select per state at this time. It's all draw deadlines in the West. So that's kind of our answer there, but look for future updates to come to this as we help you keep track of what's next. It's so easy to miss, it really is. I did see one question that asked about Arizona's online course, Ethically Hunting Arizona, and if we were gonna add it, and actually it is in there. There's a column that just says Hunter Ed, so, and you noticed on Austin's, if probably, that he had one point in all of those species, and it's because he has successfully completed said course. Correct. So it has been factored in already into that. That's right. Jared, you had some other frequently asked questions about this that came in from members. Some members are asking, you know, I'm a Huntful member. I have been for 15 years. Why is this called Hunt Planner? Why is it different? Yeah, I think what we've really tried to do over the last, you know, probably five, six years really aggressively is reinvest back into our membership. So we brought on online mapping and filtering through that online map. Uh, we have really invested in the website, CRM, better ways to take care of members, et cetera. And technology just isn't cheap at the end of the day. So uh, when we repurpose this particular app for uh, our DIY applicants, if you will, to be a virtual hunting office for everyone. Uh, it just wasn't practical. You know, we'll, we'll consider bundling and other things like that, but it just wasn't practical to include it directly as a portion of a hunting pool membership. Uh, one question, there's a couple of questions uh, regarding pricing. So we did mention that the, your first year is going to be free with the promo code July 22. Um, based based on the number of hunters that you have is what you'll be charged the following years. So um, for two hunters, it's $19.95. For four, four hunters, it's $39.95. And then it jumps up to eight hunters. That's going to be $79.95. So basically 10 bucks a hunter, depending on how many profiles you have, for the entire year. Does that sound good? That's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Just looking through some other questions here. I know one of the, we already touched on it, but one of the things that's going to come up anytime anybody starts to enroll in the, and manage their point totals here. Again, I want to stress that there's no way for us to automatically calculate points or basically plug into the state website and download those on your behalf. So again, you're going to have to manage your own points. We're just going to provide you quick links to be able to access the location to find those points. And then, like I said, we also timestamp 
time and date stamp the last time that you updated that so that you can always look at it and say, okay, I need to go update or not. That's right. That's going to be a very common question. No, there's a question uh, from Dave. He said, what if I call into a hunt advisor and I want to go over my points and my applications? Can you guys access this database uh, to support like a in-depth conversation while you're looking at my data? Uh, no, currently we cannot access any data here. Um, we have talked about a feature where potentially you could force share certain data or certain fields with a hunt advisor uh, or another user. Uh, where it would be read only access where you could just share point totals, maybe for Colorado or your notes. Um, that feature is not launched yet. Uh, we'd like some feedback on that. Um, where we're dealing with extremely encrypted um, data and information in the database, I mean, we could get our tech guy on here to explain all the levels of encryption that go in on this. But I would like to hear your feedback on how you would like the share feature to work, both with the Hunt Advisors, maybe if you call in, or with your friends. Yeah, definitely let us know. <laughs> Stephen, <laughs> it's making me laugh. Yeah, Stephen Graves has already said, I didn't look a day over 49 and a half. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate the <laughs> shout out, buddy. And then he also asked if uh, Dot's pretzels are part of the yearly fee. And the answer is no. <laughs> uh, not unless you can get us that sponsorship. I've been seeking on our YouTube channel for years now, uh, since apparently you're related to that, that uh, delicious factory. <laughs> now that... Part of his other question was, if I am currently using, uh, we've called it a point tracker before, or your point portfolio um, on the Huntful website, if you remember the old Huntful website, some people use that to store their points. We would highly recommend, we have all that data, you could convert it over to this. Definitely put it in the Hunt Planner because it's going to be more intuitive, it's going to have more fields, um, and you'll be able to categorize year over year. Another question, if you are a member of our full service license application and you're wanting to use Hunt Planner, a lot of what you'll see in Hunt Planner is probably already available to you in your Hunt Full uh, login. Yep, in your dashboard, you can already see your receipts. Um, and that's all managed by our team in house. They upload your receipt, they keep track of your points. So a lot of those features should be available in your Hunt Full account already um, if you are a full service member. Yeah, we find that quite frequently that, um, and that's on us that we haven't done a good enough job of orienting you to all of the different tools that you already have, but the dashboard, and that's one of those things I was talking about earlier that we keep reinvesting in on the website. We're, we're creating more and more tools to create forward facing unique stuff. When you log in and you're a licensed application client, you've got a little different menu because you have documents there that you need to see that we're doing on your processing on your behalf. Uh, whereas as a member, when you log in, you have your own unique stuff too, that of course a non-member or an account only member would never see. That's right. We appreciate everybody's time. What about eliminating the points that we currently use? There's no intention no. of doing We're that. We're not going to erase any data or functionality on the current website, no. for sure. So we want this to be a value add. If, if, if you, all you care about is the points and point management, then, and you'll be able to continue to use that. If you want to be able to create a true kind of virtual hunting office, then this is a much better solution. We're going to provide some more tutorials on our YouTube channel of how to use the tool. You can obviously talk to our hunt advisors anytime here in house because a lot of us are using it personally uh, for our friends and family. So we're very familiar with it and we'd love to help you out because everybody's strategy is so different. And that's why we built a tool that's open to be tailored to use it how you wish. Some guys say, you know, I, I really didn't feel good about putting my social security number in. It's not required. You, you can use this tool as deep yeah. as you'd like. Like we, we didn't force you to put anything in. You just want to keep track of, you know, states outside of your home state or one state. It, it doesn't really matter. However you want to use it, um, it's big enough that you can use it to really, you know, run all your clients if you're an outfitter or just keep track of you and your wife um, and all your logins, points, receipts. So. However you want to use it, definitely check it out. And hopefully you understand that we're just trying to make things easier for you. And we feel lucky and blessed to be part of the hunting industry. For sure. Our Every favorite day. part is putting the magazine together with all the members that have killed and had successful hunts over the last year. So don't forget about us. Share your pictures with us. And we'll definitely try to keep making things better. Yeah. I will say probably one other FAQ uh, will be how much time does this take? Austin touched on it earlier, said it's not you know a non 
time intensive process. I'm not near as organized as Austin is. And I would say that on average, it took me probably at least an hour for each of my family members. And that was mostly due to the chaos that I've been managing my applications in. I was looking at old email folders, uh, you know, and, and, you know, in some states they've changed from one system to a portal system, et cetera. I would say it takes at least an hour to get somebody fully set up in here. If, and then plus or minus, depending on how organized sure. you are. If you're more organized, you're like Austin, it probably didn't take him near as long. Well, and, and I, the transition period for me has taken a little while. I'm you know, still converting stuff from my Google Sheet way of keeping track over to using Hunt Planner for everything. And it, you know, you got to run both and see, okay, this tool fits best here. These notes fit best in this part of the new tool. So it'll take some time transition, but please give it a shot and try it out and give us your feedback. We brought it to you guys first because you're our most loyal members and we wanted you to have a shot at seeing how it could change your strategy and we're going to add more features and make it better. Before you go, be sure to click the link in the chat box. Uh, it's a job form link. Again, just a few, uh, we just need a few pieces of information. We're going to be giving away a couple of swag packs just, just for giving us your time and attention and allowing us to, you know, teach you a little bit about this new tool that we're pretty excited about. Um, we will pick a couple of random winners uh, based on who fills out that form and we'll be in touch. Thanks for watching. We'll send a follow-up email and a short survey. Let us know how we did on this first webinar from Huntful. <laughs> and we'll come up with some new topics and hopefully help you guys out. So yeah, and feedback in general, like on topics you might like to see on this. Obviously, this one, you know, we were concerned that it would come across a little sales pitchy, but we also we just want to help too. So like if there's specific topics in hunting that you want to ask, I saw one question we didn't get to there, but Give us the feedback. Tell us what you'd like to see. We'd like to do some more of these. Yeah, and in that job form, there is a box at the very bottom that says webinar feedback. And feel free to be brutally honest, <laughs> except for the part where our voices kept repeating in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> Thanks. We hope you have a great evening. And definitely feel, reach out. Go to huntful.com. You can access any of the hunt advisors and huntplanner.com to check out this new tool. So have a great night. Signing off from Cedar City. Anything else? That's it. Thank you guys. Go out and shoot your bow, shoot your gun. Have a good night.